Welcome to Robert Wood Johnson University Hospitals Health Talk. I'm Dr. Douglas Shashinsky of Robert Wood Johnson Physician Enterprises Warren Internal Medicine. Women have a one in eight chance of developing breast cancer in their lifetime. Early detection and treatment are key to complete recovery. On today's show, we will discuss risk factors and symptoms of breast cancer, screening guidelines and treatment options. Our guests today are Dr. Deborah Liu of Robert Wood Johnson Physician Enterprises Steeplechase Breast Specialist, who is the Medical Director of Sanofi U.S. Breast Care Program at the Steeplechase Cancer Center, and Kim Cromwell, a registered nurse who is, serves as the Breast Care Specialist uh, Patient ma Navigator at the Steeplechase Cancer Center. Thank you both for being here on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And let's start with Deb, Dr. Liu. Tell us a little bit about you, your background, and what got you involved in uh, treating breast cancer. Uh, I'm a board-certified uh, breast surgeon. Uh, I've been practicing at uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset for about 18 years right now. And uh, I've only been doing breast exclusively for the last 18 years. And it's just uh, one of those fields that's uh, every day intensely gratifying. You wake up every morning very happy to go to work to help Thank you. And Kim, tell us a little bit about your background and what makes you, and what is a patient uh, navigator? Okay. So I've been a nurse for um, a little over 30 years. I've covered uh, various um, types of nursing, such as OR, PACU, plastics. Um, I started working at uh, the Steeplechase Breast Center in 2015. Um, originally, I was to help with procedures and developed into the patient navigator role. And the patient navigator helps patients uh, with barriers of care. So my job is to help reduce those barriers uh, so that they get treatment uh, once they're diagnosed um, as quickly as possible uh, so that uh, they may meet with Dr. Liu. Uh, they'll meet with specialists such as social workers. Uh, they'll meet with support teams. They'll meet with a medical oncologist. They'll meet um, perhaps with a radiation oncologist. And it shortens that time frame uh, to help reduce mortality and keep them um, active in their lifestyles as long as possible. Thank you. As a primary care doctor, one of the hardest things I have to tell the woman is I've sent them for a mammogram and something comes back abnormal. And the first thing, of course, we're thinking about is breast cancer. So, Dr. Lou, tell us a little bit about breast cancer. What happens? What is it? So people understand that what, what, when, I, when we say something, I've got an abnormal mammogram, what it means. Well, breast cancer, what's breast cancer is where the cells uh, in the breast go awry. The command center goes amok and uh, where the cells, it gets corrupted so that the growth of the cells are, is uncontrolled and uh, where the cells can live is uncontrolled. So that's really what breast cancer is. Now when you have an abnormal mammogram, that's a little different. That could be a variety of things from an asymmetry in the breast that they see to microcalcifications, which are little tiny flecks that look like salt, like table salt that you sprayed onto a, onto a picture, uh, to a mass which shows up as a round density or a spiculated density on, on the imaging. It can be any one of those things on an abnormal mammogram. A lot of times women will get called back for a second mammogram, which we call a diagnostic mammogram, where, sorry, they get squished still, they get squished a little harder, but it helps us magnify the area of concern. So that's really what an abnormal mammogram is, different than necessarily breast cancer. Not all abnormal mammograms mm -hmm. end up as breast that's cancer. True. And again, let's go right now to the, what the guidelines are. They keep on changing. Every week we get another set of guidelines. Mm -hmm. At the present time, what are the guidelines for a woman for mammogram as well as should they examine their own breasts? Well, I think everybody who takes care of patients is on the cutting edge of taking care of patients every day with breast disease and breast cancer. We pretty uniformly agree that women should start mammography beginning at age 40 and continue every year. Don't stop, don't skip any years, and continue until you plan to die within the next five years. So then you can stop. <laughs> but as to what type of mammogram, definitely digital, okay? Um, but for women with dense breasts, which can be up to, you know, 40 per to 50 percent of our population, we have um, additional testing. Um, we have a mammogram called a 3D tomosynthesis mm -hmm. uh, mammogram, so which is not just a digital, it's a 3D digital. And what does that mean? Um, if you took a loaf of bread and just squashed it and took a picture, that's a, between two plates, that's a 2D mammogram. A 3D mammogram is if we did that and sliced a 
each one of those uh, loaf into individual slices, which allows us to look at 15 to 20 different slices in the breast and allows us to cut through a lot of that density. So um, that's a 3D mammogram. So as we remember, up until about three, four years ago, women used to get the regular mammogram and they had no idea about the breast density and then suddenly they start to hear about the breast density and then 50% of the women are getting back the report saying uh, they need a follow-up afterwards. So the nice thing about having this 3D tomosynthesis mammogram, which we have at Robert Wood Johnson mm -hmm. University Hospital, is that maybe it avoids them getting that unnecessary call or that scary call to come back for a follow-up. Well, actually, for women with dense breasts, the studies are starting to show that it picks up smaller tumors um, in dense breast women 34% of the time over a 2D mammo and can cut down on that callback by 17%. Um, that means that uh, at that test where you need additional views, where we're not really sure because it's dense, um, and a lot of times, you know, they turn out to be negative on callback. So it cuts down that callback rate by 17% and picks up smaller cancers in dense breasts 34% of the time better than 2D nanos. And the other thing that happens nicely at the Steeplechase Cancer Center is while a woman's there, someone reads the mammogram, and many times we avoid the callback by them having the extra test done right then and there. Correct. That's a diagnostic test, and that's mm -hmm different than the screen. A screen is where the woman goes in for a mammogram, um, she leaves and the, that mammogram gets batched and read by, at a different time by radiologists. But a diagnostic mammo, which we do do at, at mm -hmm. Steeplechase uh, on a regular basis, um, gets read right then and there. If additional testing needs to be done, either additional mammogram okay. diagnostic or an ultrasound, or sometimes both, mm -hmm. that gets done before the patient leaves. Yeah. And what should women know as risk factors to, that possibly could increase the risk of breast cancer? Well, it's, it's really, do you have all day? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but, a lot. Yeah, but there's some genetic component uh, risk factors which you can't get away from. Uh, and then there's a lot of lifestyle you know, personal risk factors, mm -hmm. which um, the small decisions you make on an everyday basis to either take you closer to cancer or further away, and mm -hmm. they have to do with nutrition, physical activity, obesity, uh, smoking, um, you alcohol. know, alcohol. Right. So again, what we're trying to do is have the woman be as physically fit as possible. We'd like her to, you know, cut, follow a well-balanced diet, low-fat diet. plant -based. avoid. Mm -hmm. A plant-based diet, yeah, avoid uh, cigarette smoking if at all possible, uh, moderation to any alcohol consumption, and uh, also physical activity also. Yes, yeah. yes. And we offer that at, at our Steeplechase uh, Cancer Center. We have um, exercise classes, we have uh, meditation, we have art therapy um, to help the, the patient psychologically, physically. We have a dietitian that works with our cancer patients who um, sometimes will have classes for uh, meals and how to prepare meals, healthy meals, to help the patient reduce uh, weight, uh, which is a, a big risk factor. And um, yeah, we believe in the holistic approach to do. the patient, the multidisciplinary team. We are a team of of specialists, you know, who really are focused on taking care of you, the patient. Mm -hmm. um, you're, and our building just embodies that. I mean, all your physicians are in one place, not just your physicians. You have your surgeons, your radiologists, your radiation oncologists, your medical oncologists, your plastic surgeons, um, your navigators, your social workers, your nutritionists, your physical therapists. We're all in one building, mm -hmm. and we're here to serve the patient, you. And that really embodies the multidisciplinary team approach where you're where your uh, team of specialists is really coordinated and on on target for you. The well, patient. it's important to have the team and the fact that as a, as a community hospital to also be within the community setting so I don't have to send the person to New York to get it. They can Correct. do it right in their own backyard, which makes follow-up care much easier. If I'm sending them for nutritional therapy, they can come back multiple times, and it's a five-minute drive there. Yes. Yeah. No, no. I mean... Definitely, you have state-of-the-art team here, mm -hmm. who you know we are dedicated to only taking care of breast cancer patients, and um, you know our team, at least the breast cancer team, mm -hmm. and you know we have the time, the resources, the availability to stay abreast of all of the cutting-edge treatments. We have patients involved in all of the studies that are ongoing um, at the national level, and. Uh, that allows them to have access to everything they would have anywhere else. Again, a terrific team, community-based, close to home, allows the family involvement, 
yeah. allows them to get state-of-the-art care at Robert Wood Johnson University yeah. Hospital. Our mm -hmm. whole our philosophy is treating the whole patient, yes. a holistic approach from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So tell me about genetics of breast cancer. Well, there's genetics and then there's genomics. Genetics is the blood test that we perform on a patient to look for a genetic mutation in their genes that predisposes them to the development of breast cancer. Genomics is where we actually take the DNA in a patient's cancer itself and run a DNA test on a patient's tumor. And we can tailor a treatment for that patient based upon um, you know what that score is. They get a score. We right now have a test called the Oncotype DX test, which is a genomic test. We take the patient's tumor DNA, and uh, we run the DNA, and we discover whether or not uh, the patient has, you know, any mutations in it, and we develop a score from zero to one hundred, which assesses the patient's risk of getting a recurrence of that tumor, and uh, it helps us tailor treatment. A low score has shown that there's no additional benefit of giving chemotherapy to the standard tamoxifen. Um, a high score shows that there has been benefit from, the patient will get benefit from getting chemotherapy. And the intermediate score, which was just released in June, shows that patients do not also uh, have any additional benefit, a survival benefit from having chemotherapy in addition to hormonal therapy. So we don't need to give those women chemotherapy that's, anymore. That, that's the HER scores that people talk about? No, that's, a, that's, the, uh, that's the Oncotype DX score mm -hmm. okay. that people are talking about. And you were going to show us something? Oh, well, that, that's just the cutting edge stuff that we're doing from the medical standpoint and the, mm -hmm. on the um, chemotherapy standpoint. From the surgical standpoint, we're uh, participating, uh, we, all our surgeons perform now oncoplastic procedures uh, where you get the best of both the oncology as well as the aesthetic outcome. So not only can we take out a woman's tumor now with, um, with good margins, but we can give her the best cosmetic outcome as possible too um, with breast conservation. And part of that is uh, we're using this device called a uh, Biosorb, and it comes in nine different sizes. It really is inserted into the woman's uh, lumpectomy cavity. Um, and it absorbs. Over about 18 months, the spiral absorbs, and you'll see these little clips in there. They're, they're uh, for radiation targeting that the woman's going to need after um, her lumpectomy. It helps the uh, radiation oncologist deliver very targeted, precise radiation just to the tumor bed uh, with, for the boost where they need it, and not so she doesn't get a lot of extra radiation around the boost site. And that's also very new technology that we're also using. Again, it's wonderful that the uh, leadership of uh, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health, has us doing state of the arts in the community. Oh no, definitely. We believe in doing the, the best, the, the most current available technologies for... And the fact is that women should be referred more to Steeplechase Cancer Center Breast Absolutely. Specialist because they can get state of the art right here on site. Yes, correct. Now, At home. what happens when the woman is uh, diagnosed with breast cancer? I've got a woman, I've got the mammogram, it's abnormal, she had the biopsy, unfortunately it's positive. I now have my uh, patient call the number and they get in touch with you, the patient navigator. What happens? So most of the time I'll actually see a patient after a diagnostic ultrasound, mammogram, diagnostic MRI, which is uh, we also offer for our patients, especially with dense breasts. And um, they'll come to my office and they'll come in for consultation and the initiation of the trajectory of treating the patient. Um, so we'll talk about uh, needing a biopsy. Now, depending on the modality that we use to see a potential area, uh, that patient will have a biopsy either using ultrasound, uh, stereotactic, which we offer at our breast center, or an MRI biopsy. Um, usually the patients are frightened. Uh, they don't want to hear that they need to have a breast biopsy. And so I offer a lot of emotional support. I direct them to a breast specialist if it's needed, if uh, their medical doctor or gynecologist feels that uh, they need to have a consultation initially. So I'll refer them to someone like uh, Dr. Liu. And um, eventually, once we have the prescription, we set up an appointment. Um, I will be there for the procedure um, and will help them uh, with that biopsy. And then, if positive, they'll again go back to their uh, uh, breast surgeon and discuss the steps that are next. We also include, depending on what type 
of breast cancer it is because there are a number of different types. Um, the patient may be referred to a medical oncologist initially. Uh, they can be referred to a geneticist initially. It all depends on uh, what uh, that initial result is. And uh, then we, we run with it as quickly as we can so that patient gets the excellent care um, at our breast center as well as with our doctors. And um, that plan of care um, goes right until survivorship. And then some. And I always have an open door policy for my patients, all my patients, um, so that if they have any questions, concerns, uh, they're wondering what the doctor is thinking, um, they're wondering about their appointments, they can come and see me at any time when I'm there. Again, the team approach. Yes, absolutely. Which makes it better for the woman, it, the family. It does, it does. Allows them to understand what's going on, mm -hmm. allows them to understand what the next steps are. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, the team. It's all, it's all, you know, that's the, that's the one big thing that a patient needs to understand, that you need to put together a team of experts that, that helps with the best outcome that you can possibly have, a team of coordinated experts. Mm -hmm. Well, a team of coordinated experts, not only doctor experts. Correct. Mm -hmm. But... The Our survivorship program um, takes you beyond, you yeah. know, beyond your diagnosis and your immediate treatment um, with more and more women surviving you that's know right. all our and good that's technology. actually a standard with the Commission on Cancer and the NAPPC that we have navigation it's part of the standards and survivorships uh, uh, it's a care plan that the patient follows because once they're done with treatment it just doesn't end and the patients are always concerned about okay well now what you know you're sending me back into the world and what do I do yeah but they follow this care plan and they know that they will always be able to meet one of their doctors. Uh, they can certainly meet one of our nursing team. Um, we are always there for them and yeah, we the never stop. the care plan is pretty specific though too. It helps with, the, you know, it's individualized for each patient yes. uh, so they know what their plan is for follow-up, what their plan is for surveillance for new cancers, mm -hmm. um, what they can do for themselves proactively to help prevent recurrence from happening such as lifestyle changes with the nutrition. That's when we really get hard on the nutrition counseling and mm -hmm. the physical uh, activity. We get them involved in programs. We have integrative um, we have integrative therapies on site, such as yoga and Reiki, to help you know help patients go forward and live, you know, mm -hmm. afterwards. And of course, people ask, are there clinical trials available? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, um, we have quite a few. We actually. have numerous clinical trials. Um, one of them was the Taylorex trial, which I just talked about with the Oncotype DX. We were involved in that trial. Uh, that was a national trial as well, the largest actually mm -hmm. prospective national trial ever for. For breast cancer, mm -hmm. the Taylor X trial. So again, the important things about the Steeplechase Cancer Center. One, I have a patient navigator that a woman can get in touch with, or I hate to say it, at times a man can get in touch with when they've That's had it. True. You know, we haven't talked about that. Mm -hmm. It is a low probability, but men do get it also. Okay. And the yeah. scary thing for a man is where do I go? Yes. You know, I'm going into a room that's got women and I'm the only man there, and a lot of them are scared. And are, the fact that you unusual. have a patient navigator, that I've got a breast surgeon who understands that, mm -hmm. they don't feel as embarrassed. They're able no. to get it on, they're able to get the treatment. And unfortunately with male uh, breast cancer, there's a high incidence when they get it of problems with it. Well, I actually navigated a patient with Dr. Liu who was a male uh, patient and he was quite anxious. Uh, he had his wife, he was concerned on a number of different levels, and um, Dr. Liu took excellent care of him. We both did, and we follow him. Um, and uh, he received uh, treatment, he had surgery. Uh, he also received uh, chemo and targeted therapy. And uh, now he's a survivor and uh, doing quite well. Yeah, we have support groups for men too mm -hmm. um, that are very well attended at Steeplechase as well. Which again is so important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's, uh, it is very unusual, and because the Steeplechase Cancer Center is such a good support system, such a good system that we're able to take care of both the normal, the abnormal, the unusual. Mm -hmm. And again, it starts with the first call to the patient navigator, mm -hmm. it starts through the team approach to breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Correct. 
the fact that you have the psychologists, the nutrition people, the yoga, the Reiki, which I don't think there's any others around here that even have the Reiki, and there's not that many Reiki masters that are even around to do that. We also have a support boutique, which is very yes. unique to our, um, to our cancer center also, where women can get wigs. We have a certified mastectomy, uh, post-mastectomy fitter mm -hmm. to help with post-mastectomy bras, um, and even post-lumpectomy, you know, bra fitting. So it, it's absolutely amazing the comprehensiveness of our well, it's also the center. prosthesis that they get there is mag it's it's well done many yes. of the women that i've sent there are absolutely thrilled with the results that they get afterwards mm -hmm. and when they have to get a new one how they're able to get a new one very quickly and they can't tell the difference between the old one and the new one yes yeah. you know, i refer a lot of patients um to our uh, the person who runs our boutique, and uh, especially if I'll yeah, see, she's certified, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll certified. see a, a patient postoperatively from Dr. Liu, and they're admitted to the oncology unit. And uh, if I feel that they need some additional support or supplies, I will call uh, Lisa, who is our boutique person expertise, and uh, um, get her involved in the patient's care. Sometimes she'll go and see the patient in the on the unit as well before the patient's discharged. Otherwise, they'll, they'll make appointments to see her in the upcoming days when they have a follow-up appointment. And then the survivorship, yes. so important because, Very. again, a woman who's been through it, has made it through, now says, what am I supposed to do? Right. Yeah. yeah, we help guide them. We help guide them both with surveillance, what they need to do from the medical standpoint, mm -hmm. and with the going forward, the things they need to do on an everyday basis so that, like we talked about, all the nutrition, the choices. Um, this is when the counseling starts, the education, mm -hmm. um, and, and patients are, are, are really receptive to it. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that you have both been there for a while also. It's being able to talk to the same person again mm -hmm. to, to bounce ideas off of them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We want to let all our patients know we got your back. Yes, you know, with it. we do. We do. Again, so important. Mm -hmm. So, wrapping it all up, Dr. Lou, tell us a little bit, just something about what women should know about the Steeplechase Cancer Center. Uh, that we are available. That you can get state-of-the-art care at all levels um, in a very compassionate environment. That you have lots of options in taking care of your breast cancer and we're here to present all those options to you uh, and help you make the decision that is best suits you and help you give you peace of mind at the end of the day as well as medical you know optimally give you the best outcome mm -hmm. Kim, something that the women should think about on their way out um, we're there for them we're always there for them if they if we're not there physically they can uh, call us and, and leave a message on my phone um, I have a private office. We can uh, meet for emotional support with families one-to-one. -one. Uh, we have a terrific uh, breast center on the third floor of the Steeplechase Cancer Building. Uh, most patients don't even know about it, but it is state-of-the-art with um, the latest and greatest technology. Um, we encourage our patients to come there even for screening. And um, we work uh, with each and every patient. and. Um, will always be there to take care of them, as so Debbie said. So the big thing is everyone needs to know about the Steeplechase Breast Center. Yes. Yeah. The fact that they get they can get one, the screening, yes. they can get the follow-up, they yes. can get everything, and it's a team approach to it. Mm -hmm. right. And that they can start off not knowing anything, but at the end of it they know exactly what's been going on, what the follow-up yeah. is, and their health is improved because of it. Absolutely. We have to basically, again, thank the leadership at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital for setting this up, yes. as well as everyone at the Steeplechase Cancer Breast Center for doing what they do. Yes, definitely. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. This concludes today's episode of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital's Health Talk. Please remember the opinions expressed here by our medical experts are not a substitute for medical advice from your own physician. If you need a physician, please call us at 1-888-MDRWJUH. For more information about breast cancer services at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Somerset, please visit us at www.rwjbh.org forward slash Somerset. Thank you both for being here, and thank you for what you do for women's health care.